Hi there, I'm Mario Petrucci and this video is the truth about writer's block. The truth. I'm figuring that if you're here, you're probably feeling pretty awful about writer's block. It's a nightmare, isn't it? Most writers fear writer's block profoundly, especially professionals. I've often felt that it was like a pearl diver plunging into an ocean of cold custard, hoping, hoping to find one pearl. I was there too, drowning in it, locked out from myself. But then I discovered something, something that turns everything round when it comes to writer's block, and I want to share it with you. First things first. Why does writer's block happen? Why? Now the usual answer we get is that it's the inner critic seeking perfection, jumping in and stopping you before you even start. Yeah, that's part of the story. But it's a particular case of something more general I've found. I've spent decades working with blocked writers and I find that the solution is usually a little bit more than just cutting a deal with your inner critic. Like most quick fix cures, yes, that does deal with a significant part of the truth, but it's not the whole truth. And I've found that the more general insight is this. Writing block pretty much happens because one part of the self, usually a conscious part, just ain't listening to another part of the self, usually an unconscious part. That's it right there. It's that simple. And what I've found is that the bigger the block, then the larger and or deeper that part of us that isn't being heard. But that takes me to the second point. So what do we do? What do we do about it? And how? That's sometimes the tricky part. Let me ask you first, what do you think we should do about writer's block? Just give that a moment now. Did you have any ideas? Do you think that maybe we should do nothing, just wait? Or maybe push through it with some exercises or some techniques? Or maybe you have no idea what to do. That's why you're here. What I'm about to offer you is revolutionary. What if I told you that the seeming brick wall of writer's block could actually become your deepest treasure? So what do we do about writer's block? Let me make you one suggestion. And I don't think it's what you expect. Are you ready? You don't fight it. Don't fight it. That's just fighting yourself. You don't try to stop it. You accept it. You surrender to it. You listen to it. Now, don't misunderstand me. Surrender isn't the same thing as just giving up. It can actually be very active, active listening. It's not passive. It's not just waiting. And we probably don't hear much at the beginning when we're listening actively. We probably won't get an answer of any obvious kind. But listening is the big first step and the most important. But it has to be active listening. Think of when two people are arguing and both are speaking at the same time. Neither of them is listening and they're certainly not listening actively. So what is this active listening? How is it active? Well, we've got to be with that inner experience of being blocked. We can't avoid it. We have to be with it. We mustn't resist the resistance. If we have any agendas or expectations or fears, if we resist the resistance, then our unconscious block will prevail, probably. Think about it. If writer's block were a conscious problem, we could just remove it consciously. So we have to engage, connect with our unconscious. Listen, even if seemingly nothing comes through. Listening actively means being alert and responsive to those habitual agendas that we don't allow ourselves to experience. It's not letting our usual hidden fears 
and expectations continue unexperienced. Now, the inner critic in this context is just one more aspect of not wanting to listen. It's a strong part of us that's already decided that we're probably not any good. Listening actively means taking note of that without going with it. So pause now. Listen actively yourself to what you're feeling. Not so much what you're thinking, but what you're feeling. So what if you don't really like what I'm saying? Let's be honest. What if you're reacting against this idea of surrendering to writer's block? What if deep down you're not keen on letting it be what it is? You're not keen on listening to what it's really trying to tell you without any conditions, none on what it's trying to tell you. Well, that's fine. That's absolutely fine, really. But let me ask you, what does that reluctance tell you? Now that's active listening. Being aware, maybe just a little more aware of things like this. For example, how we resist the resistance. Now in one way, this deep surrender to writer's block, to listening, active listening, isn't terribly difficult, in a way. But it can also be very tricky. Ask yourself, have you surrendered to not writing? Could you walk away? Stay with that question. What is writing block really telling me? Am I listening? Introspect, but don't agonise. This is not so much about thinking, it's more to do with feeling and hearing. Empty yourself. And bear in mind, if we can't surrender to writer's block, then how can we really surrender to writing itself, to that flow, to that full joy of writing? This brings me to my third point. Now this is radical because the block can become your resource. What I'm telling you is that it's possible, it's possible to go from writer's block, writer's rags, to writer's riches. And there are two ways to do that. First of all, sail the ship out, not wanting to get anywhere, but simply to enjoy the view, to enjoy the ocean. Have again that childlike joy of just speaking, of making enjoyable sounds with nothing riding on it, no expectations, just the experience of writing. Enjoy the activity, the activity, not the result, whether it's good or not so good. Just write because you're writing. Let the activity itself be sufficient, at least for now. And the second thing you can do, I'm offering is something practical. And it sits in the larger framework of dealing with the deepest roots of writer's block and what perpetuates it. And we can't always just listen and get there and release ourselves straight away. So if you can't actively listen, or even if you can, there are still techniques that can guarantee a way through, even if the door seems firmly shut. It's not a substitute for it. But it runs in parallel because sometimes you need a little practical nudge to crack that door open or to give short term relief. And I'm giving it to you for free. Why not? I want it out there. Watch that title. Watch that title. It's a short free audio that's on my Writing into Freedom website. And you'll find the link for it at the end of this video. And watch that title will absolutely guarantee you something even if you're in the deepest trenches of writer's block. Try it. Have fun with it. Don't worry. It really does work. Go and unblock yourself. Good luck.